Well, welcome back. This is going to be a uh, first of six videos looking at risk evaluation and mitigation strategies, actually risk decisions. And this is based on Chapter 8 of um, Evan Wheeler's most excellent book, Security Risk Management. Uh, so uh, we're going to start off uh, this first video uh, looking at risk decisions. So that's our, our starting point. Here are the uh, agenda and lesson objectives for the entire chapter. We're going to evaluate and document risk decisions in a uh, business setting. And then we're going to talk about a formal exception approval process in a business setting. Uh, very cool. Uh, so as we're doing this risk evaluation, we'll go back to some of the underlying premises of the book and of this course. First, uh, there is no flawless security. Uh, there will always be risk and all those risks are not equivalent. We have to prioritize those. It is normal to have exceptions. It is normal to have mitigation plans. And so as we're looking at the possible decisions that we can make, uh, there, there are four that we've kind of uh, focused on in this course. This idea that uh, sometimes, uh, actually quite rarely, we avoid the risk by turning off uh, the underlying system. Uh, sometimes, the risk of mitigation is so high that we accept the risk. Sometimes we actually mitigate or lessen uh, the risk uh, by implementing additional controls. And then sometimes we transfer the risk to a third party through a service level agreement or through cyber insurance or something like that. All right. Um, then, of course, we have the humorous little cartoon there uh, where there is a problem with their prioritization uh, as they're evaluating cloud, yet have all of these different vulnerabilities associated with their system. All right, so let's go through each of these decisions. We'll start with the avoid. That's, as I mentioned, we're turning off the system. We're ceasing whatever activity is presenting uh, the risk. As I mentioned, this is in the minority of cases. Um, and an example of this would be stopping data leaks through portable devices by disabling USB ports and CD-ROMs. So when I was a military officer overseas in a combat zone, uh, this was one of the things they did. They turned off all the USB ports and CD-ROM drive to try to limit uh, the movement. Of course, they didn't monitor it very well, and their technical controls were quite weak. Uh, so it didn't do a very good job of, of, of doing that, avoiding. Again, very fr uh, infrequently used. Uh, the accept decision does happen because, again, not only are some risks unavoidable, but they're not worth uh, mitigating. So are you really going to go into your uh, company and say we're not going to use personal cell phones or personal computing devices to uh, conduct business? And it may be that you do, um, uh, but for most companies, that's not going to happen. You're actually going to uh, accept the risk associated with that. Same as USB drives, you can try to out rule uh, or outlaw them. Uh, but most people accept that there will be USB drives in their organization. Uh, the third decision is the most popular one, the most common one, and that is you try to mitigate the risk by limiting the exposure, reducing the likelihood, decreasing the severity, or uh, reducing the sensitivity of a resource. What you're trying to do is get it underneath your risk threshold so that the residual risk, whatever risk remains, uh, is actually at an acceptable uh, level. And so uh, risk mitigation, I've listed here actually a pretty poor example, secret questions. It's not my favorite. Um, their secret questions are often uh, quite easily guessed. But it is a mitigation step or a mitigation uh, uh, control to complement a uh, user uh, login and password. And then finally, as we talked about, you can sometimes transfer a risk uh, and this could be through a service level agreement, or it could be through cyber insurance. Uh, as you recall, in some of our previous readings, this is um, only used in a minority of settings now, but it will grow over time as people make business decisions that uh, uh, suggest that transfer of risk is actually the best approach. Well, look at that, how time flies. We've actually covered the four decisions uh, associated uh, with risk. We're now going to move into how do we document these decisions, but that's another movie. So this is the first of seven uh, videos looking at Chapter 8 in Wheeler's most excellent book on security risk management. Keep on studying, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video where we look at documentation of these risk decisions.